Hey everybody, welcome back to your fourth episode in this miniature Linux series. So we're gonna just talk about overall how to get started with Linux, how to become a beginner in a bunch of different things. So hopefully that sounds useful. I made it sound kind of bad, like, oh, by the end of this video, you're gonna be pretty much a noob, but this is a good overview of a lot of different stuff. In this episode, we're gonna be talking about my notes over there, which is how to run different programming languages and start installing software. So there's a very useful tool, apt. So if you type apt, it's gonna give you a bunch of information you can read about. It's a command line package manager and provides commands for searching and managing as well as querying information about packages. So we're going to install some packages. And just as a reminder, if you want to get to this point in the series, be sure to watch from the beginning. We got this virtual private server from Hostinger who kindly sponsored the series. So shout out to them. If you want to try out their services, use my link in the below areas. <laughs> below areas. Check out the link below. It's a little better. So here's what we're gonna do. We're going to say apt update. And this is going to get all the updated versions of all of the packages we have. And then what we do is we say apt upgrade, which is going to upgrade or apply any of those changes. Do you want to continue? Yes. And there we go. So now we are all up to date, ready to go. So to use apt, just say apt install and then some package. So I know beforehand that I want to install this package git and doing this, do you want to continue? Yes. So git is the source control manager that we're going to use for software. And now we should be able to say git hyphen hyphen version and see the version of git we have installed. So now I should be able to take a GitHub repo, copy that link, and then just say git clone and paste that web address. And that's going to clone it into a, a directory called Python. And that's just based off of what this repository is called, Python. And now when we say ls, we can see we have that Python directory, which is our Python project. So we can change directories into that Python folder. And I'm just gonna clear off our screen a little bit. And now you can see all of the stuff from the original repository. And it looks like I need to add this DS store to the git ignore, but that's irrelevant for this video. So what we can do now is we can run this code using Python. So if you type Python and dash dash version, we can see if we have Python installed, it looks like we have Python 2.7. What about Python 3 dash dash version? And here we have Python 3.8. So when we want to execute Python, we want to use this version, not this version. So what we would do is we would say Python 3 and then something like beginner Python. That was not a file. Looks like we need to grab one specific example. So we'll go into Python 3, beginner Python, and then specifically we'll run 01 numbers.py. And running that means you get a bunch of output from the file. And there you go, that's how you run a Python file. Simple enough, so we'll clear the screen and we'll talk a little bit about something else. So the next one I wanted to talk about is C or C++. And for these, you will need a compiler. So GCC for C and then G++ for C++. For installing these, what I recommend is sudo apt install build hyphen essential. And this will install all the C, C++ stuff. So hit enter and that's going to install everything we need. Yes. All right, it's done. And I totally forgot to mention in the previous command, I used sudo apt install build essential, and this will basically give admin privileges. So you can execute a command, and if it complains like it doesn't have the privileges, then you can prefix it with sudo. However, right now in the series, I'm not gonna be talking about security or permissions at all, just because that is a whole nother game. So just uh, be sure to be careful when it comes to installing stuff and giving any kind of admin privileges but we should now be able to say GCC and it says no input files, which is good, it means it's working, and also G++. So let's go ahead and make a C file. We'll say vim test.c and then we'll go into insert mode. And here we will say include standard io.h and then we'll create a main file 
and in here we will say something like print f working return zero all right so we will write and quit and we should be able to say gcc test.c all right and what that's going to do is it's going to create a file and that file is going to be called a.out by default when we are compiling a C program. So what we to do to run a file is we say dot forward slash a.out. So running that file and we get working, which is what I printed. I didn't put a new line, so that's why this is all on the same line. Awesome. So you can do the same thing with C++. So we will say vim test.cpp for C++. And in here, it's going to look like this. IO stream int main standard C out hello world and I'll remember to put that end line here and L and then return zero. So escape to exit insert mode and then colon WQ and now we should be able to say G plus plus test.cpp and same thing that's going to replace the a.out file so you can change the names if you want but I'm not going to talk about that in this video so then we just run that a.out and we get hello world. Fantastic! So those are the three languages I want to talk about Python, C, and C++ but another really popular one you're going to find with Linux is Bash. So I'm going to show you real quick how to create a quick Bash script. So we will just say vim test dot sh so test.shell and in here what we're going to do is we're going to say echo hello there and then we will write quit to run this same thing dot slash test.sh and we get permission denied so to work with permissions we will use chmod and we're going to give the execute permission to test.sh and now we should be able to run this. So let me just try it real quick. We do get hello there. So, so far so good. So now I'm not gonna get into the details of permissions, but when you do ls-la, you get all these permissions over here. And the one we're looking at in this example was test.sh. And you can see we just added the execute permission for this file. So there's a bunch of different things you can do for chmod to customize all the different permissions so be sure to research that and it might be something we do a dedicated video on in the upcoming videos but for now that's all we're going to talk about it so let's just clear this off so i wanted to touch briefly on the shell script real quick so let's open the shell script now anything you do in this shell script it's as if you're going to type that into the terminal so for example we can list the files in the directory we can create a file test.txt for example and we'll just leave it at, and then we'll let's say we'll ls after that and then we'll right quit so now we'll run this test.sh and there we go it says hello there it lists the directory contents it creates test.txt and then lists the contents again now with that test.txt in the directory so that's obviously not a full comprehensive tutorial on shell scripting. However, that should get you started. That's all I have for this video. If you've enjoyed the content, please be sure to hit like, subscribe, check out our sponsor Hostinger if you want to set up a virtual private server or get some website hosting. And don't forget to check out the next episodes because we're going to talk about my favorite tool, Screen. Yeah, stay tuned. Bye.